So oh, it's Sunday afternoon, about 4.30, according to the bed o'clock. Um, I just finished water change out here in the garage. And you all seen water changes, so I'm not going to bore you that. But I thought I'd just do a quick uh, tanks, tank tour. So I got these two tanks. This one, there's guppy grass, and there's a few shrimp in there. I put them in here to sort out, uh, sort them from all the muck. Then I had a hang on back filter to sort out the muck. And I'm going to get them out of here. I've got a pair of guppies I want to put in here. I started on the first of this month this duckweed experiment with two pieces of duckweed. There are now four. I just want to see how long it takes to completely fill this tank. It's five and a half gallon, and if I did the measurements right, and actually I got them offline from the Petco site, uh, it is just over one square foot of surface area. I mean, it's 1.001 or 1.002 square feet, something like that. So we're going to see how long it takes for duckweed to fill out that one square foot. And I, I threw some tang in the bottom. I figure why waste the space? And I'll probably put some guppies in here too, or something small. Anyway, and then the 40 breeder with uh, Bob and Carol. There they are, Bob and Carol. And this other little female, she's starting to get a, a little... Uh, a little aggressive she wants Bob I think so and there should be another one in here somewhere and I think I've got a home for for the two that uh, I, th I think that I know somebody that would like those uh, and there's some uh, I think there's three uh, auto sinkless in here very cool little fish I would love to be able to raise those or breed them and there's I don't know eight nine false julies and five empty Ember tetras, and I need to get a few more of those. Great did the fish, really pretty little fish too. And then these, and I do all of these about 50%, and I don't do them every week, but whatever, you know. And here I've got some potted plants. There's those uh, uh, crip pink fl flamingos in the two pots there. Um, I did an unboxing on that. And the crips in the front there are uh, Nurii Rosen Maiden. I uh, did an unboxing on that too, I think. And then there's, I throw a piece of java fern in here and there's some uh, uh, dwarf water lettuce and Ricky water spangles and there's some duckweed. And I did a video on how I fish out duckweed. So I got to get back on that. And then another one of these, these are 41 quart tw tubs. I got them at uh, Target. Uh, and there's guppies in here and there's uh, cherry shrimp in both. And I think they might be orange ones in one side and red in the other. Uh, and then this other 40 breeder that I set up down here with, uh, did that video on uh, uh, the Amazon swords that I separated out of this 40 breeder. And I ended up potting them all, and that was all in the video, showed how I did that. And this piece of manzanita with bucephalandra, and I wish I could get that stuff to grow better. Maybe it needs to be closer to the surface, needs more light. Yeah, chime in. There's also, there should be 10 or 11 autosynclus in here, and I think three, four, maybe five little bronze quarries, uh, and a few guppies and some ram horn, ram's horn snails. And let me get the rags out of the way. And then there's this tank. This is the one with my uh, neon orange sword tails. Uh, they've been spawning like crazy. Um, I don't know if we'll see any across the top. There's one of my plecosauruses. And uh, there, there's a little fry. And then there's loads of red cherry shrimp in here, and that Ricky water spangles and uh, dwarf water lettuce, jungle val. These are the big Amazon swords that I took the spikes off of and separated all those smaller plants out of. Bunch of crypts. Check these out. These are been in here about six months, and there's substrate under there under the gravel that uh, pond soil and and I can't remember all what else fluval stratum, and so they they're really doing well. Um, there's a wind to love java fern and the jungle valve spreading in this too and I'll show you some others that there is no substrate under the rock just um, just the sand and gravel and somebody's asking about you think it'll grow in there a couple people asked me that yeah it'll grow in there but you're going to have to fertilize it I think either with root tabs or liquid fertilizer in the water column or both probably if you don't have some sort of substrate Go to the other side of the garage here, my uh, juvenile beta tank. I'm collecting out snails. In this fry tray, this is one of Lowell's uh, fish lab fry trays 
And these are where the little juvenile court, not quarries, the little juvenile crebensis that I got from Bob and Carol that I rescued because I figured they'd eat them. And see that little piece of java fern leaf, that long green one right there? There were albino quarry eggs on it, so I took that and dropped it in here. Uh, and I'm thinking they were too, sm uh, the albino crebensis too small to eat those. So there may be albino quarry fry in here as well. Within three days, they had hatched out. So, and then my juvenile bettas, they'll be a year next month, October. And this is the tank I've been fighting uh, uh, blue green algae. And I did a, I've got a video coming on that. And also um, black bear algae. And that was all over this uh, sponge filter. I took, or a different sponge filter. I took it out, it's soaking in bleach, kill all that off. And then this is the other tank with all the cribs and other stuff. And, uh, there's a uh, different kind of a uh, Amazon sword there. And you can see really, these have been in the, the substrate about as long as the others on the other, that 40 breeder I showed you with the uh, neon sword tails. Um, is Storf Sagittaria. There's nothing under there but, but gravel and it's some lava rock, uh, cracked lava and, and sand and a little bit of fluval stratum. It was mostly like a used substrate and they're just really slow here uh, because there's not that layer of nutrients from that pond soil uh, and the layer of fluval stratum and whatever else I had buried under there. Um, so there's a difference. So I do fertilize, I, I, I'm due to put root tabs down in here and I do use the liquid fertilizer. I try to do it weekly, maybe every 10 days, but I try to be really regular about it. This pot with this Amazon sword, um, this one is doing really well because uh, there was some sub, well, you know what, I take that back. It's doing the same, it's got the, the same kind of substrate, used substrate in it. Uh, I've put tabs in there. They're a little more confined, so this gets them and it doesn't have to share them anywhere. And then this little, uh, I think it's, what is it, a red lotus, tiger lily, something like that. And there's a couple big, big leaf crypts. There's one, I can't remember the names. Uh, I'll put them up as they come up. There's three of those. I, I lied, there are two of those. That's an Amazon sword in the back. Uh, and there's a bulbitis glued to a rock right there. Uh, but this crypt and this crypt are the same. And I got them from, uh, uh, is it Tara's Tank Friends? I'll put it a link. Um, and then another Amazon sword that I pulled out of the kitchen tank because uh, there's just too much plant for too little space. I cleaned it up a little bit and just shoved it down in the gravel here. Uh, a different crypt. I've got a couple more in another tank we're coming up on. Uh, and some Savasa Tang. I like that. I'm trying to get it, trying to find a happy place for it. Um, and a little five and a half gallon tank with some guppies. I threw a handful of crypts in here from the kitchen tank when I took that apart. I got a video on that, go check it out. Um, and I bought some green jade shrimp the other day. And instead of packing them in that nasty little green plastic stuff that, uh, you know, you get at the produce in, you know, little bags of that uh, green plastic, you know, it'd be like little, little chunks of garlic or something in those. He used, threw a handful of java moss in here, which I thought was really cool. I much prefer that. And there's some guppy grass back there. And uh, there's some orange sunkissed shrimp in here. And then this is uh, species crebensis. These are the children of Bob and Carol. They are a year and a half old now, something like that. They're, they're a little, uh, little plain looking right now because I just did the water change and they're not particularly thrilled. But they'll color up really nice. They have some beautiful iridescence. And it's a nice mix of male and females. And then if we, uh, oh, and by the way, these are the other two species of cryptochorine. Uh, I'll put the name up on those. There's some diatom algae on these. I've been struggling with algae in these tanks, so we'll try and get this all straightened out one of these days. And then down below, this is uh, a 20 gallon, and the only thing in there are red cherry shrimps, some java ferns, and a bunch of hornwort on top. Uh, and this one, there's some of these, uh, you know, I can't remember the name. Somebody knows what they are. These yellow golden uh, guppies, please. And this is a tank full of uh, orange sun-kissed uh, neocaridina and a bunch of guppy grass. 
and then this tank is these red tuxedo guppies and a bunch of blue dream uh, neocaridina and a bunch of guppy grass and there's a few other plants in there and then this tank and they're hiding right now are these wild type mollies uh, out of the Colorado River and a bunch of guppy grass and a bunch of uh, red neocaridina and yeah and unfortunately all those tanks have a uh, I'm constantly pulling uh, you can see all the fry on top of the water there I'm constantly pulling uh, bladder snails out of these to keep somewhat water under control and this tank on the end a bunch of uh, Mickey Mouse platies and there are orange sunburst and just straight orange mixed in here uh, I took the adults out there in the house so let's go around the fish rack here and this is the back side of those 20s so we'll come up here these are the albino crevences Bob and Carol's children their brothers and sisters are in that other tank, the species looking ones. Where'd they go? There they are. They're a bunch of cowards. Unlike their, their brothers and sisters, these guys are just a couple cow or a bunch of cowards. And again, they're about a year and a half old. There's three autosynclets in here. And I think they're, oh, <laughs> and there's an orange sunkish shrimp. And that had to come. I just put guppy grass in here. I should probably get that out of there. That may turn into lunch for these guys. I don't know. And then a tank full of guppies and some plants. They they always stink food. These guys always. And there's a bunch. So they're just, uh, I you know, uh, the guy that gave them to me called them a mutt guppy. Uh, I think they're technically referred to as fancies. And there's this one. I'm going to sort this one out. That one there, I'm going to get it out of there and uh, try and see what I can come up with. I think that's the one anyway. There was one with real black tail. So anyway, and then let's go over here. This is another one of those tanks that was in that video with the blue green algae. And it's, uh, I think it's an eight and a half gallon tank. And I use this, uh, what's it called? Ultra Life slime, blue green algae slime um, control. So it's, uh, it seems to do the trick. So there's just, some floating java fern in here and a uh, piece of hydrocotyl japan just floating plants and crypts and it, hopefully they're cleaning up now this tank was a mess and then my 75 and this is uh, these two guys and they're doing well and there's uh six seven bronze cores the adults in here that the juveniles are in the tank with the bettas and there should be, God, I don't know, eight or 10 uh, clown plecos in here. There should also be a couple hillstream loaches. And my hopes aren't high on any of those. I, I found one carcass and I'm not sure if it was a hillstream loach or, or if it was a, 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 one of the clown plecos, but it was pretty much picked down to nothing. The, uh, uh, there's ram's horn snails in here and they had pretty much cleaned up the carcass. I dropped blue-green shrimp in here once. They may or may not. I, I saw one not too long ago behind the stack of rocks. So there may still be some in here. Um, I think these guys uh, probably help clean them out. I don't think they're fans. Or, or they're really big fans of shrimp. But anyway, I've got this big, uh, big lily on the end here. And there's a couple different species of uh, Echinodorus, the... Uh, uh, Amazon swords. There should be a couple different kinds of crypts in here. There's one called spiralis um, And I'm not sure I think There's one in the back back there that long slender leaf right about there. There's a little bit of the uh, uh, Hydrocotyl Japan There's an Amazon sword back here And then a bunch of cryptochorine uh, the bront or what's red and then uh, Sagittarius subulata. And this all had a substrate. I've got a video on how I put this tank together, I, how I cut all this rock um, to, uh, to be able to stack it flat against the wall, put styrofoam against the back and underneath and stack the rock. It's just free stacked. Um, and then I shoved a couple little pieces, thin slices uh, just to kind of wedge it, keep it from leaning forward at all, because that would be calamitous. 
But anyway, that's kind of the end of the day, end of Sunday. I hope everybody had a wonderful Sunday, um, wonderful weekend. And then uh, um, I've gotten all the water changes done. I've still got a couple tanks inside. i got to do some stuff, too. And as always, you know, I appreciate you watching. Uh, have a great week ahead, and thanks for looking.